So um, when I taught you iterators and especially list iterators, uh, I forgot to tell you how to think about them. And this is kind of an important, I guess it, it's, it's more of a, a way of thinking about iterators. Um, let me show you what I'm getting at here. Um, so let's say that I have an array list. And I should also mention at this point that in the olden days, they used to write array lists like this. And when you wrote an array list like this, what was the type on the array list if you don't specify it? Can anyone guess? Mr. Franovixer, what do you think is the type? That's right. And so you could basically put anything on there. This is considered bad practice now. And you should specify right down to the lowest level object that you can what the array list is. But I mentioned this because I think this might accidentally be how it's written on your quiz. Yeah. OK. So OK. So uh, this is how you, we, we've created an array list. And I put these five elements in the array list. So right now, uh, after this list has been created, the, the array list looks like this. A. B, C, D, and E. I'm going to put a comment marker here so I can work with this and not disturb the program. OK, and now we've got an iterator here. I'm going to first switch to a regular iterator. This is just your a plain old iterator, not the specialized list iterator. It does work on lists, but it can only go forwards. And uh, I'm just going to print the list right now so you can see that it indeed does contain A, B, C, D, and E. So let me run this. And you can see that here is my list right here. Yes, sir. Oh, no, I, I should have done that. Sorry. I'm glad you brought that. It's the exact same issue, sir. And I should have put that in there. Uh, let me just run it again. Th that's another bad habit um, that, unfortunately, I have and don't want you to pick up. You should tell it what kind of iterator it is on the list. OK, so th this is the right way to do it. <clears throat> now, um, I want to show you some stuff here. Uh, let's say I were to go like this. Uh, if I was to go uh, it.next, and this in itself is a dangerous operation because I haven't checked to see if there is a next, but I'm just going to be lazy and just go go past the first item here. And then if I go like it.remove, uh, who can tell me, is it the A or the B that gets removed here? I probably didn't discuss this enough last time we were together. It's the A that gets removed. That's right, sir. Let me print the list for you before and after just so you can see what's happening here. And you can see that the A gets removed. And sometimes you might have a little trouble picturing in your mind what's going on because you're like, hey, I'm past the A. What's going on here? And one of the things I want you to get to the idea uh, in your head is that these iterators, it's better if you think about them sitting between the element than actually at the element. So what I'm getting at here is when you first create this iterator, right? when you first create this iterator, the way to think about it is that the iterator is sitting over here before the A. OK, so it's sitting here before the A, right here somewhere. And the reason you want to think about it that way is that what happens if I do the remove command without first accessing the next feature? What do you think would happen here? Ben, what do you think would happen? You're going to get a runtime error. And that is surprising to some folks. If you think about the iterator is already pointing to the first element, you're not going to understand this runtime error. But if you think of the iterator as being over here, and when you do a remove, basically it removes removes the last element that was accessed uh, typically by next. And if it's a list iterator uh, or previous, also would be in there like that. So let me run this for you now. And you can see, indeed, I am getting a runtime error because I haven't accessed any of the elements on the list. So just to make sure we understand this, I'm going to show you a more complicated example using list iterator because list iterator lets us go backwards and forwards, of course. So to do that, I'm going to switch over this iterator to a list iterator. And I'm going to go like that. And in order to understand what's going on here, we're going to follow along with our little example here as we go through each of these steps so that it becomes clear 
when we hit the remove, which element is being removed. We want to be clear about that. So the list iterator is going once again going to start off over here. And when we do next, this list iterator is going to move over here. And that's after this command has executed. And then after I do the next again, the list iterator is going to move over here. Now it's between the B and the C. Now, if I was to do a remove right now, what would get removed, Mr. F? Sorry, would get removed the B. Now I'm going to do list previous, and it's going to return the B again, and the iterator is going to be over here. And now I want you to discuss with your partner when I do this remove, what's going to get removed? If you're not sure, look what I wrote here. It's still B because B was the last element that was accessed. So now if I run this, you can see it was the B element that got removed. Oh, okay. So when you do next, what's happening here, it's not so clear the way I've written it, but let me show you here. It'll This will make it much more clear which element is being accessed here. If I actually use the access to do something instead of throwing it on the floor. So you can see now, which is clearly what's being accessed because I'm printing what's being accessed this time, right? So now let me run this for you again. You can see the A was accessed and the B was accessed. Then when I did the previous, the B was accessed again. And now when I did the remove, the B got removed because it was the last thing being accessed. Yes, sir. So you can think of this as sort of moving along in a file and it's sort of like whatever was the last item that you moved over, as Ben said, that's a good way. What previous does is it moves the pointer back one, okay, so that now it's still, this one was accessed, but the pointer is here now instead of here. That's the main idea behind the previous, and you can use this previous to parse backwards. That's the idea there. No, no I, I added a second one, sir. So here, let me show you that. So if I was to go like here, which element's going to get removed, sir? Okay. Sir, look, the, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll walk through this with you. So initially, when I create this iterator, the iterator is sitting over here. It's sitting before the A. When I do this next command, the iterator moves over here and I print the A. When I do this next command, the iterator moves over here and I print the B. Now, when I do the remove, which element's going to get removed? B, because that was the last one that I accessed. Let me show you that. So you can see that the B was the last element accessed and it got removed. 